Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'du First of all all praises and thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessing and mercy we are able to get together in the Zoom meeting to attend and follow webinar organized by team of interprofessional education and collaboration the faculty of health science state islamic university sharif hidayatullah jakarta first the dean our dean the dean of faculty of health science uh, apologize for her absence to this webinar because she has another oh, meeting while uh, in the same time and she sends uh, her best to all speakers to dr allah and miss christy and uh, also to all audience uh, she apologizes for her absence this webinar is sequent program from the committee international education and collaboration the faculty of health science uh, state islamic university who uh, chairs by uh, bapa uh, karya di phd is bapa karya di already join or not yet and uh, i think this webinar is important for us to gain new knowledge about uh, ipe and c implementation in australia and qatar and this knowledge could be support uh, our model uh, development uh, because uh, the team of ipe and c in the faculty of uh, health science is developing model of, of ipc in our faculty involve three major discipline nursing pharmacies and public health and i hope we can take this advantage to explore how qatar and australia implement ipe and c especially in university of qatar and university of sydney this webinar is impossible without strong support from the speakers organizing committee and all audience in this opportunity i would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to, to all speakers and audience for fruitful support and contribution to this webinar and finally i also would like to thanks to all the organizing committee members chaired by ibu raihana nadra alkaf phd that have been working hard in preparing and organizing this webinar with uh, we say together basmalah bismillahirrahmanirrahim i open this webinar wishing you all enjoy and rewarding this webinar Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, our vice dean, for the wonderful remarks. Without further ado, before the presentation begins, allow me to introduce the wonderful moderator of this webinar. She is uh, Dewi Iriani Utami, PhD, who is lecturer in environmental health public health program study faculty of health sciences ua in jakarta she graduated bachelor and master in university of indonesia and for phd in jusendo university japan she had a lot of publications both of national and international publications one of them in 2021 is determinant of work stress on the civil servant at the term at the department of education Cilegon city when work from home in the era of the pandemic COVID-19 in 2020. All right, uh, Mrs. Dewi Iriani Utami, the time is yours. Thank you, Ibu Mita. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Abisrohi Sodri, Wayasirli Amri, Wahlul Ukdatam Milisani Afkahu Khalif. Good afternoon for everyone in Indonesia and also from in Australia. And then good uh, morning from uh, in, the, in the Qatar time. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Health Science, 
Ibu Dr. Zilhadia and today uh, she has apologized that cannot be present in this international webinar. The Honorable, the Vice Dean, Faculty of Health Science, Ibu Dr. Irma Nurbaiti, PhD, Ibu Dr. Yuli Amran, and Ibu Ida, Dr. Ida Roshida. Our distinguished participant from another faculty, Faculty of Medicine, Psychology, Economy and Business, Dakwah and Communication, and Ushuluddin, and special distinguished speaker, Dr. Ala LYC from Qatar University, and Ms. Christy Van Dijel, Master of Education from Sydney University. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dewuta Miryani. It's an honor for me to be, to be here as a moderator in this international webinar. I'm pleased to all participants to join this international webinar to learn and discuss about implementation of interprofessional education, lesson learned from Qatar and Australia. At the moment, Faculty of Health Sciences is trying to develop interprofessional education and collaborate between our study program, public health, pharmacy, and nursing. We are trying to find out a perfect model or formula that can be adopted and implemented here. This webinar will be divided into two sessions. First session, Dr. Ala LYC. She is already be here. Hello, Dr. Ala. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. She is from Qatar University, and we will uh, she will give her presentation, and the session the first session will last at uh, two for two fifteen. And after that, we have break time for 10 minutes. Then we will continue to second session with Miss Christy Fine Dijel, Master of Education. Hello, good afternoon, Miss Christy. Hello, and thank How you. How should I call you, Miss Christy, or, or just Christy? Christy. Okay. Is fine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, she is from uh, University of Sydney, and every session we will have discussion time. 45 minutes and to all participants if you have any questions please drop it in the chat room it's below your zoom application okay now let's start with the first session may I introduce our distinguished speaker Dr. Ala LYC she is assistant dean for student affairs college pharmacy Receive Master of Pharmacy degree from Strach Clyde University of Glasgow in UK, Master of Science in Prescribing Science from Robert Garden University in UK, and PhD in IPA and Collaborative Practice from Robert Garden University UK. Experience academic administrator processing creativity, innovator and education. Work experience pharmacy in Scotland more than nine years, founding the chair of IP committee since 2015 and has led successful IP initiative locally and internationally, including leading the first Middle Eastern conference in IP and collaborative practice in December 2015. She has published numerous articles and peer review journal in the field of pharmacy and IP. Dr. Ala, you have 30 minutes. Time is yours. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman ar rahim. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much uh, for inviting me and uh, Ramadan Karim. I can't believe it's almost halfway through Ramadan. Yeah, we're almost uh, more than half uh, during this uh, blessed month of uh, Ramadan. So thank you so much uh, for inviting me uh, to be part of uh, this uh, workshop. Um, it's an honor. Um, and uh, oops, I will just go back to the first slide. 
Okay, so I have uh, 30 minutes, so it's around 9.20. Um, so yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be part of the, um, your workshop uh, on interprofessional education, um, which is a topic that's really near to my heart. And uh, it's really great uh, seeing different countries um, st um, uh, uh, starting to um, introduce interprofessional education within the, the program. Definitely, it's not easy, and uh, you need uh, you, you need to be passionate about it, and you need to put a lot of effort into it. But it's really worthwhile the effort. Um, so I'm going to be sharing our experience here in Qatar, um, uh, um, and uh, then I, um, towards the end of this presentation, I'll be sharing some tips um, from an article uh, that we have published on how to introduce IPE within um, your program. So um, I think it's very important uh, before we proceed is uh, we uh, define what IPE is. Now there are a number of definitions, but the most common definition for IPE is the one by the Center for Advancement or, um, of Interprofessional Education in the United Kingdom, where they talk about um, uh, IPE is when you give students two or more professions um, and give them the opportunity to learn with each other from each other and about each other to improve collaboration and the quality of care. And I think it's very important from the beginning to get the definition right. So this is really going to be the base for any IPE activity that you're going to be moving forward. And as you know, there are two important documents, the Framework for Action on Interprofessional Education and Collaborative Practice back in 2010, um, where I think one of the main messages within this document is if we are expecting healthcare students once they graduate to be working together, why are we not giving them opportunities within their education to work with, from, and about each other? Um, uh, and then um, the WHO also, um, uh, they have published another document, the Global Strategy on Human Resources for Health Workforce 2030, again emphasizing the need for interprofessional education and collaborative practice. And I think uh, many of you are aware of the say saying, by failing to prepare, you are preparing mm. to fail, um, uh, which I think is very important that we need to prepare our healthcare students, you know, for teamwork, for collaborative practice, so they succeed and really promote a collaborative uh, practice environment. So our IPE journey in Qatar, um, it started, I would say, back in June 2009, uh, where we have formed uh, Qatar Interprofessional Health Council. Um, and it was really uh, uh, formed to drive IPE forward in Qatar and in the region. Um, it was mainly the deans from the different healthcare schools here in Qatar. Uh, they used to meet regularly um, and, you know, started really introducing the topic to the different institutions. Now, a couple of years after, the person who was leading this uh, initiative, he left uh, Qatar. And I think when he left, things, um, the, the, the council became really dormant. And I think this is also another important message, is you always need to think about sustainability from the beginning. Um, you need to think about having a proper structure. So at the moment, you will have a passionate group you, that you are working in, but if this group for some reason moves to another place, you want to make sure that this IPE is going to be sustained within the institution that you have. And what happened after in April 2014, the Interprofessional Education Committee um, was formed. Um, uh, it was led by Qatar University College of Pharmacy. And one of the main reasons for having this committee was the College of Pharmacy program, they have um, uh, the Canadian accreditation for the pharmacy program. And as part of the Canadian accreditation, we needed to show evidence that we have IPE within our curriculum. So I would say um, the accreditation was a key driver for incorporating IPE within our curriculum. And then in January 2017, um, uh, the health uh, colleges within Qatar University, um, they, they uh, w w or 
we had the establishment of the future. Teman-teman kembali lagi dengan kambing patah di sini. Jadi di video kali ini gue pengen bahas uh, bahas mengenai jaringan guys ya. Jadi jaringan ini yang digunakan untuk live streaming teman-teman. Nah jadi banyak teman-teman yang bertanya di kolom komentar dan yang ada yang dua bang kira-kira kecepatan internet yang dibutuhkan untuk live streaming itu berapa sih dan settingan bitrate nya itu kira-kira berapa guys? Oke. Okay. Ya, teman-teman yang menggunakan ini home karena telkom karena gue itu cuma ada satu provider internet teman-teman yaitu telkom ya cuma itu gue untuk excel dan provider lain si ibu masuk oke sebelum saya mengkompare kedua produk telkom di sini YouTube sudah memberikan standar variabel bitrate. Di sini dikatakan resolusinya itu 1920 kali 1080 ya. Kalau ini resolusi kalau masalah lurus sih ya kalian pastinya paham sih ya. Dan bitrate yang di, dan bitrate yang disarankan itu adalah 4500 sampai dengan 9000 kbps. Nah, kalau yang 30 fps itu di 1080 pixel itu 3000 sampai 6000 kbps. Nah sekarang kita coba lihat di 720 60 fps Di sini ada bitrate yang disarankan itu 2, 2250 sampai 6000 km per second teman-teman Oh ya yang perlu kalian pahami juga Di sini ada 6000 km per second bitrate range nya Jadi kecepatan yang kalian butuhkan itu adalah 6 mbps untuk kecepatan upload teman-teman Ingat 6 mbps kecepatan upload nanti gue bakal kasih lihat standarisasi yang ini. Jadi di sini Facebook sudah memberitahu uh, 10 mbps adalah 10000 dalam OBS. Kalian paham? Oke, okay, kita balik lagi ke YouTube. Dan untuk kualitas 480 pixel itu resolusinya 854 kali 480. Nah ini bisa kalian lihat juga nih kalau masih bingung dengan resolusi 480. Dan bitrate yang disarankan itu antara range 500 dan 2000 km per second. Di sini ada 360 juga, tapi saya nggak menyarankan kalian live streaming menggunakan 360 guys. Soalnya itu 360 itu sudah sudah burik lah. Apalagi kalau misalnya kalian main game yang Mobile Legend atau PUBG atau game lain lah. Ini kurang disarankan sih ya guys. Dan di sini kalian disarankan menggunakan bitrate encodingnya itu yaitu CBR. Ini CBR maksudnya constant bitrate teman-teman. Ada CBR, ada FBR juga. FBR itu maksudnya variable bitrate. Nah itu kalian harus sesuaikan juga guys. Karena settingan default untuk OBS itu kalau nggak salah, kalau nggak salah sih ya, kalau nggak salah VBR guys. Coba kita lihat dulu ya. Nah di sini kalian bisa lihat ada CBR, ada VBR juga. Nah untuk YouTube itu disarankan menggunakan CBR. Kalau nggak salah Facebook juga menyarankan menggunakan CBR. Jadi sebaiknya kalian standar standar streaming kalian yang ada di sini yaitu CBR bukan FBR. Oke kita balik lagi. Sekarang kita coba buka yang Facebook. Nah jadi di sini Facebook sudah memberikan uh, keterangan juga bahwa kalau misalnya kita live streaming di 1080 60 fps itu menggunakan 6 mbps sama saja dengan 30 fps nya Kalian harus menggunakan kecepatan 6 mbps. Dan seperti yang saya bilang tadi di sini satuan OBS bitrate adalah kilobit per second. Jadi 10 mbps adalah 10 dalam OBS. Itu yang harus kalian pahami guys. Jadi sebelum kita bahas kecepatan internet dari dua dari dua telkom itu kita bahas dulu yang ini biar kalian paham lah. Untuk 720 60 fps itu kita gunakan 6 eh, 6 3 mbps. Ini yang perlu kalian ingat ini kecepatan upload guys bukan kecepatan download. Itu yang perlu kalian ingat. Sama saja dengan 30 fps di sini 3 mbps juga dan mana nih? Oh ini keterangannya nih. Nah di sini kualitas lebih tinggi, konten lebih lambat. Resolusi, nah di sini ada bitrate 6000, frame rate-nya juga dapat 60 fps. Kalau misalnya 720, oh ya sama saja nih kayaknya tadi. Nah di sini 720, kalian menggunakan bitrate 3000 di sini. Biar dapat kualitas 720, 30 fps. Kalau kalian ngasih bitrate di bawah 3000 itu nggak bakalan dapat kualitas seperti ini di Facebook. 
Facebook teman-teman. Nah seperti yang saya bilang tadi untuk format bitrate-nya kalian dianjurkan menggunakan CPR juga nih. Di sini sudah ada perangannya. Sudah lagi kan? Oh enggak. Oke saya rasa sudah cukup. Sekarang kita bahas mengenai kecepatan dari dua produk nah, Telkom yaitu WPID dan Indonesia. Jadi masih banyak teman-teman yang belum belum paham ternyata uh, WiFi ID itu bisa kalian gunakan di rumah kalian. Ya mungkin kalian berpikir hanya untuk uh, yang punya usaha atau untuk kantoran. Ternyata WiFi ID itu bisa kalian pasang juga di rumah kalian. Nah di sini saya bakal ngetes kecepatan dan kestabilan dari WiFi ID dan Indo Di sini saya punya dua kecepatan internet yaitu 10 Mbps untuk Indo dan 20 Mbps untuk WiFi ID. Nah ini kalian lihat di sini saya sudah connect di koneksi saya di sini. Ini adalah WiFi ID guys yang 20 Mbps. Sebenarnya untuk yang ini yang kecepatan Indo Home yang 20 Mbps itu sama saja. Cuma yang membedakan nanti itu adalah kecepatan WiFi ID yang ada di sini. Oke pertama kita tes dulu yang ini. Kita tes dulu dan di sini saya sudah tes tadi hasil terakhir itu adalah 20 Mbps dan kecepatan upload adalah 39 Mbps. Sekarang kita coba tes lagi. Oke, ini sudah memenuhi syarat kalau kita pengen live streaming 720 guys. Nah, sekarang kita bandingkan dengan kecepatan 10 Mbps Indie Home jadi ini pas malah punya tetangga gue kita nyolong ya nah ini dia hasil dari Indie Home 10 Mbps paket 10 Mbps yang punya di sini kita dapat kecepatan 11 Mbps untuk downloadnya sedangkan untuk uploadnya itu kita dapat kecepatan 2,2 Mbps kecepatan nah sekarang kita bakalan coba tes kecepatan dari WiFi ID jadi WiFi ID itu hanya untuk satu device guys jadi karena tadi saya sudah coba di handphone pertama kali coba di handphone kita nggak bisa ngetes di PC sebenarnya ada cara untuk lompat uh, WiFi ID untuk uh, akunnya maksudnya cuma karena tadi kita berada lama jadi untuk cepat kita tes saja di handphone guys oke ini WiFi ID nya kita coba login dulu Oke, okay, sini sudah connect dan sekarang kita coba tes tipnya. So this 
these are usually the total number of students involved and the total number of faculty facilitators involved. Now, this academic year, because of COVID, we went online. And uh, initially, we thought, oh gosh, this is not really going to work. But thankfully, we were able to deliver our IPE activities. And as you can see, we have those that are part of the curricular, and then those that are extracurricular through the IPE student uh, association. Um, so turning the IPE into virtual events, as I said, initially it wasn't uh, an easy task. Um, however, um, with the, you know with the different pilots that we um, so we used Microsoft Teams, um, where we divided the students into interprofessional teams and with a facilitator, and also we used um, Google Jamboard as an interactive whiteboard instead of using the flip chart which we intend to use um, on campus. The IPE Student Association, so I remember when we first formed the IPE committee, um, one of the things uh, I was uh, thinking, um, you know, we had a student representative and I was thinking, you know, what are we going to ask them, you know, or what are we going to, to tell the students uh, to do the student representative? And uh, the lady with the green star, Miriam, I remember asking her, what do you think about forming an IPE student association? And she, you know, she said, oh yeah, why not? So um, she, where, you know, she we tried to, 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 through the IPE representative for them to nominate a student representative from the different programs. They worked together really well. They were very active the group. They formed their own logo, which you can see here. And um, the maroon color represents uh, the Qatar flag. And um, they tried to include some you know, the different professions within their logo. Um, uh, and yes, and they created their own website. Um, this is the current IPE Student Association. So as you can see, um, we have members from the different uh, colleges um, holding different positions, um, in addition to having college representatives. And these are the kind of activities that they do. We have the annual IPE forum. Uh, which includes the healthcare team challenge, outreach to them, conversion debate, workshops, and some you know, social and media activities on campus. So these were pictures um, pre COVID, of course, um, with, with COVID coming, you know, things have changed quite significantly as we continue of doing things uh, virtually. Um, we had the IPE virtual debate, so I remember last summer. Um, with especially with everybody staying and not being able to travel. And we thought, you know, why not try something different rather than a webinar or, you know, something uh, a little bit different. So we thought, let's do something um, on, um, like, virtual debate on, on COVID-19 topics. And I remember we were intending to do just one, but there was so much interest from the students uh, to participate. So. Uh, we decided to do three uh, during last summer. The f one was regarding the continuous, whether continuous quarantine and precautionary measures should be a priority over lifting the restriction to avoid negative economic and social consequences. And as you can see, the two teams are represent different professions. So everyone comes within the team comes from different uh, backgrounds and different healthcare professions. The second debate was on um, uh, whether uh, the need, uh, 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 like in public health emergency, um, the necessity to protect the public outweighs personal freedom. And the third one was on whether telehealth can provide patients with more post, uh, cost effective and better quality care than the current uh, practice. Um, all of these uh, debates are on the Qatar University uh, YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, you, um, I'm happy to share links um, if you are interested in seeing these. And then we had uh, interest uh, from, uh, I remember I got communication from colleagues from the UK and from the state. And they, uh, they said, how about, you know, our students debating with your students? So uh, we had one in the UK back in general related to um, whether um, countries should temporarily restrict the international tourism in response to the second wave of COVID-19 transmission. And I believe these were really excellent um, um, 
opportunities for the student to debate current issues within interprofessional teams. Outreach events, again, these were things that we did pre-COVID, where we, you know, students would go out in the malls and work together to reach out to the public. These are some examples from ITE research in Qatar. So far, we have around 30 publications about ITE in Qatar. Faculty development. So when we first started, we had an interprofessional symposia just to try to, and it was designed to equip faculty members with the knowledge to develop ITE content and skills to make the curricular changes for implementation. And we had the two ITE experts from Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. They came and they delivered this two-day symposia. And we had some of the deans from the region, from Saudi Arabia, who came and participated to see, to try to bring ITE into Saudi Arabia. And then in 2015, we had the first Middle East Conference on Interprofessional Education. We had the Professor Hugh Barr. We had Professor Liz Anderson and some leading experts from Canada as well. And it was really well received. So we had four keynote speakers. And we had, like it wasn't really just people from Qatar. We had 14 participating countries. And not just from the Middle East, but also from outside the Middle East as well. And, you know, for us, we were starting with ITE. And we were, you know, looking on how can ITE further within healthcare education and establish a Middle Eastern network on ITE. Also, as part of our committee, we've been doing some CPD events with the healthcare professionals. And, you know, trying how to translate interprofessional learning into their environment. Many of you, I'm sure, are aware of interprofessional support, which is the Global Confederation for Interprofessional Education and Collaborative Practice. And there are some of the regional networks, and there are the emerging networks. So currently, the Arabic-speaking countries are part of the emerging network. And we're working really hard to get the network established. It's not easy as you're dealing with different countries within the Middle East. But we're trying our best to get this started, hopefully soon. And also, as part of interprofessional.global, they have the Altogether Better Health Conference, which is the leading ITE conference that happens usually every two years. The countries that they've been in is UK, Canada, Sweden, Australia, Japan, the States, New Zealand. And we were going to be hosting this conference for the first time, bringing this conference to the Middle East in 2020. Unfortunately, nobody thought about the COVID-19 and hitting, you know, and affecting everybody at a global level. So, yes, though we were, it was actually announced during the New Zealand conference that we were going to be hosting this. Now it's going to take place in 2023. So that's in about two years' time, inshallah. And the theme of the conference is about cultivating a collaborative culture, sharing pearls of wisdom. And we have a number of different sub-themes. So these dates will definitely change. However, I hope, inshallah, by 2023, you will have implemented ITE within your curriculum. And you will be able to come to Qatar and share your pearls of wisdom. And also, how did you deal with interprofessional collaboration during the pandemic? So, yes, this is about the ATPH postponement to 2023. These are my contact details, my email, my Twitter account, and my LinkedIn account. The last thing I just wanted to talk about, I know I think we have about four minutes. This is a publication that actually during our first Middle East conference back in 2015, we had a workshop about introducing ITE or 
introducing interprofessional education into the different health profession um, education. And during uh, the conference, we had a workshop um, with Professor Hugh Barr, um, uh, Professor Elizabeth Anderson, um, uh, Leslie Bainbridge uh, from Canada, and colleagues um, uh, Kyle Wilby and Kerry Wilber were working at Qatar at that time. And uh, within, uh, so we published um, this workshop um, uh, later on on how to get started um, and what are the most important steps for introducing ITE. This uh, article is uh, available uh, online, and so uh, you can easily um, access it. Um, and these are just a quick summaries of you know, the steps. And within the article, we go through the different steps and explain uh, these. Um, so the first one is about getting uh, started. And this could be through you know, forming a committee with representatives um, you know, from the different professions that are going uh, to be involved. Um, what's you know thinking about the definition, the values, the principle? What models you want to um, adopt? Um, formulating the outcomes. Um, which shared competencies are you going to um, you, you use? Um, also, trying to decide who are the professions that are going to decide. Um, which students are going to be part of this? Um, and also, what who or, you know faculties that are going to be involved. Um, selecting the themes, um, so as you've seen, um, like which themes are going to be relevant to your context that you would like to tackle. Um, so as you've seen in ours, we looked at diabetes, we looked at pneumonia, um, we looked at smoking cessation. Um, so I think trying to think um, what, are, what, are, what is going to be the focus um, of your uh, topics. Um, be collaborative in case and activity design and mix of learning methods. Um, I think a very important message here is when you're developing, and, uh, and this is what we always tend to do, when we develop an activity, we always send it around to the different profession to make sure that their perspective is included. Um, like, for, for example, um, um, uh, one of my colleagues in public health, she always looks at the case from a different perspective. So, you know, sometimes when you have a clinical background, pharmacy, medicine, or something, you're always looking at the clinical details. And this should not really be the focus. We should be looking at the team, at the interprofessional communication, um, and so on. Um, determine levels and stages. So as you've seen in our um, uh, model, uh, we use um, the exposure, immersion, and mastery. And within each level, we have different activities designed. Um, facilitating the learning is very important, making sure that your facilitator really understands um, how to facilitate ITE. So I could be a really good facilitator uh, in my pharmacy group. However, facilitating an interprofessional um, team, um, you know, require you need to be um, requires some faculty uh, development, which is very uh, important. And I think always trying to ensure that the students will get a positive experience and really. At the end of it, they're going to really be wanting to participate in more ITE activities rather than having a negative experience and becoming resistant uh, to participating. It's very important to assess and utilize feedback as much as possible. Um, for us in Qatar, um, I think uh, initially we start we did quite a lot of um, research on student readiness, faculty readiness, um, and we've heard a lot, uh, you know, from them on. What's the best way to introduce this? Um, so I think trying to hear from those the stakeholders um, that are going to be part of your process is very important. So, and I think that's why was one of the reasons why things were successful is we built built up our model, our uh, uh, program based on the feedback of students and faculty. Um, uh, evaluate the intervention. I think you know this is very important. And uh, it's a this is a hot topic, um, you know, assessing ITE, evaluating ITE, and I don't think um, there is like a, a, a golden rule on how this is done. And many people are really trying to find the best way to get this, uh, um, you know, the assessment and the evaluation of ITE. And finally, share your experience through conferences, um, you know, through publication. And I think within the article. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, listed um, some of the key journals um, for ITE publication, plus um, some of the international um, ITE uh, network. 
Um, uh, also, finally, um, uh, if you would like to know more about our program, um, we also have this article, um, uh, which was a SWOC analysis of how we integrated IPE into our healthcare curriculum published in the PM3 uh, Medical uh, Education. So I think I'm just on time. That's my 30 minutes over. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Allah. That's very inciting. Uh, I have noted some uh, words that come from you. There is no golden rule for uh, implementing the IPE in our uh, college, right? And we, we need assessment, continuous assessment and evaluation and build model based on the feedback of our students, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, questions in the chat room. Okay, uh, come from Ibu Raihana. Okay, uh, Ibu Raihana said thank you for your 